In Thorne, Leslie's meeting social historian Professor Keith Laybourne to try to understand Mary and her role in the temperance movement better. Wow, look at this. This is wonderful. What's this place, Keith? <laughs> this is the temperance hall. It was built in 1903. With temperance, I mean, the, the real concern was that, in the, uh, that, that, he, that a, a, a respectable person is one who should be thrifty, um, should be involved in self-help. Uh, drink, of course, was a hindrance to that. Right. Then there was a, a movement for teetotalism, but by the late 19th century, the movement really in temperance had moved towards trying to restrict drink through legislation rather than a moral call to people. And often it's the women, who, certainly the sort of lower middle class or middle class women, who take up this responsibility for trying to control uh, drink. And at this period, there's a lot of social reform. Temperance leads in to social reform. They're part of that process. And remember, it's not that many years before women, at least over the age of 30, have the vote in 1918. And 1928, of course, it's the flapper vote, women over 21. Within 20-odd 20 years, 20, 30 years, society has completely changed. I, I suspect that Charles would have been very upset at the sort of activities that Mary was involved in. They are a challenge to his authority. Keith Laybourne's description of Mary's new world of temperance strongly contrasts with the old Victorian world of Charles Garrett. Interestingly, the temperance society we have from this cutting here was inaugurated just four or five months, six months after my great-great-grandmother died. So we might have a situation here where drink was connected with more than one accident and that women of the community were saying, we've had enough now, we have to do something about tackling the issue of drink. I can see a situation where the newly married Mary, wife of Tom, would want to make friends with other women. I think she didn't want anything to do with her father-in-law, Charlie, and the scandal of what had happened to his wife with the, the drink that surrounds this man. I think she wanted a cleaner life, a better life. She wanted to belong to this society. And look where she is, in the middle, at the top. She wanted that to be the dominating influence. And the only way she could achieve that was by removing him from their family life. So he had to go. In the end, Charles paid a high price for what happened. There never was a reconciliation with his son Tom and daughter-in-law Mary. The rift had a dramatic impact on the Garrett family. It seems Tom never inherited any of Charles's land. He also shunned his father's world of local politics. Instead, he and Mary ran a small butcher shop in Thorne. Yes. Yes. Do you think I could have a look at it? Because I'm trying to find out if it's that yard. Because that's my great granddad Garrett. Yeah. Called Tom, and that's his wife, yeah. Mary, and that's the front of their butcher's shop, which we think was here. Yeah. And that's the slaughterhouse yard. It might be a bit different now, though. Can we go and have, have a look? Because <laughs> it'd be great if it is, and I can stand just where he stood. Because this would have been full of animal parts. <laughs> Presumably. That might be the old wall, but I don't know with I don't so know. This is your yard, yeah. Is it? I think it could be probably across that back there. Well it's you yes. know that across there. Yes. Look, that looks very yeah. much the same brickwork, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, that could be it across there. Well so so that's a new wall there. That's a new building there, that part. So there. my granddad would have been stood about here. Looking out. That's amazing. Look. Yeah. I think this is the yard where my great grandfather Tom Garrett would have slaughtered animals and all the things that butchers do, scrubbed down with carbolic acid. And I think it must have been a really hard and difficult life. And that's my great grandmother Mary, looking, I think, pretty determined to get her only son, Arthur, who was also born here in 1909, away from this kind of life and into a better life, a life that was more reliant upon education. And 
I think she wanted him away from here and in onto the railways because there he could have a nice clerical job, could sit in an office, he could write things down, he could be clean and tidy.